what we're going to do is go year to year and teach you how you can tell the difference between a 1963, 4, 5, 6, and 7 C2 Corvette. The first thing we want to talk about on this 1963 Corvette is obviously the rear split window. It's the only, it's the only generation of the C2 that had the split and it's probably the most famous of the C2 generations. Now, we're gonna go around the outside of this car first and I'll show you what's different than the other versions of these cars. So right here in the roof support, we have these kind of faux louvers. This is the only year that these louvers were actually kind of flat from the factory. Now, on a 63, the doors are different. So you can supplement a 65, 6, 7 door, but on a 1963, the actual handle has a raised edge in the fiberglass. They also had a chrome piece right here in the A pillar. That's only for 63. And if we go down here to the rocker panel, we can see that it has a specific chrome piece here with a lot of little slats in it. That is also a 1963 only piece. So if these wheels were ordered from the factory with the black wall, they were body color. You can see that the actual rim itself is the same color as the actual paint. Now, if this car was ordered with a white strip or a white wall, the color of the rim would be painted black. Now, they all came with wheel covers. There was no knockoffs in 1963 unless they were an early pilot car or a race car. They all came with this style of wheel cover, and there's two different styles of wheel covers. There's the early versions. The early 63s had a frosted inner ring, you can see that this one is chrome, and they were made of about 17 different pieces, so they were very, very expensive to produce, and they're a one-year only thing for 1963 Corvettes. <laughs> so, the, so the headlight buckets on a 1963 are actually fiberglass for the early cars. They were some metal ones that later on in production. They were all metal in 64, but these buckets right here are specifically made from fiberglass, as well as the cookie trays or the cheese grater insert right here on the hood. Um, those are 63 specific only. So this is the, the 327 down in here, and you can see that it has a, a 340 horse sticker on there. Now they made several different versions. Uh, you could get the, the fuel injected version, which had 360 horsepower, and 64 then it would be bumped up to 375. But the owner's asking $200,000 for this car. And you can see the, the number for it is right here. This car is very, very well restored. But we'll talk about the interior to this car. So in 1963, they had different seats than in 1964. You can see that the, the backs of this seat right here is, is sloped. In 64, it would have came straight out and then down, as well as the center console is completely silver. Also, the shift boot for this car is different than in the 1964. And the shift knob is Bakelite and it's black. In 64, they would have also been silver. These cars have a 13-piece carpet kit, meaning that it's not a molded carpet. Each individual carpet piece is separate. And you can kind of see that if you take a look in there and see all the seamed edges on the inside. Now, of course, the glove box door on these cars were made of plastic with a clear um, centerpiece that kind of, kind of looks like a, a faux aluminum. And those change later on in the years, as well as the, uh, the steering wheel is body color or interior color for a 63. Those would switch over to kind of like a wood finish in 64 and then teak wood in 65. And the last thing is the gauges on the inside there have a silver cone on the inside, and those would be changed the next year. So overall, pretty cool car to start out here with on a 1963 Corvette. The last thing is this is a Stingray, and you can see that it does say Stingray right here. Now that would be the same for 1963 all the way to 67, but in 1968, the Stingray logo would switch over to Stingray being one word instead of two. So we actually have a 1963 convertible behind me, a little bit different than the split window. Of course, this one also has the hard top. But what I want to show you guys is the, the white walls on this car, and it's different than the black tires that were on the split window we just talked about. Remember that if this was a non-white wall tire, the rim color would be painted body color, but because it is a white wall tire, the rim is painted black. Now, if we also take a look on the inside of this car. We can see that the steering wheel is the same color as the interior. 
you also notice the park brake down there. That would change for 67. We'll get to that here in just a moment. But the owner's asking $79,900 for this car. His phone number is right here. It is painted in ermine white with the red interior. Very, very nice car. Very nicely done. Oh, something else I forgot. You can see in the center console is it does have power windows. Pretty cool. So this is a, a 1964 Corvette, and there's a lot that we can learn from this car. So. In 1964 is the first year that you would have been able to get knockoffs as a production car on the Corvette. We can see that they have original 63, 64 Kelsey Have knockoff wheels, but they only made 806 Corvettes in 64 with knockoffs. Now, what's different for 64 than a 63? Now, of course, we have the, the hubcaps here or the wheel covers because they cover the entire wheel. That's 64 specific. Now. Also on the interior in here, the gauges, they don't have a silver cone in the center of them. They have a, a black cone in the center here, as well as the steering, the steering wheel is not body color or, the, or interior color. The steering wheel is a wood instead of the interior color. And the shift knob is not black. It's a, a white color or a silver. It should be a silver color. The boot's different, and on the steering, on the center console, it's black. It's not silver. As well as the glove box on that side over there is a brushed aluminum. It's not plastic like it was in a 63. And then also the side, the side skirts down here at the bottom, they just have less ribs than a 63 car. And this car is fuel injected. It does have 375 horsepower from the factory. We can see the fuel injection unit on the front here. But something that if you find a Corvette in the wild and you're not really sure what you're looking at, this is the radiator support. And the radiator support for the fuel injected cars have a hole right here. You can see the air, this, this piece that funnels the air to the fuel injection unit. This is, this is specific to a fuel injection car. So if you find a Corvette with no motor in it or anything like that, and you wanna know it's fuel injected, look for the hole in the radiator where this unit is. Now, the hood on a 64 doesn't have the, the cheese grater or the, the cookie trays, whatever you wanna call them on the top here. It's a much shallower hood than a 63. Remember the 63 has to have the trays in there. So the depth here is a lot more shallower on a 64. And lastly, the headlight buckets on a 64 are made of metal. Wouldn't be a Backyard Barn Finds video without us talking about a 1969 Camaro. And this Camaro behind us is for sale. They're asking $37,500 for this car. And we can see it has a, a new front subframe underneath here. Looks like a lot of the hard work's been done. Looks like they got Ride Tech coilovers on there, got uh, upper and lower control arms off of a Corvette. I'm not sure if that's C5 or C6. Um, power steering rack, firewall's been shaved. Looks like a pretty nice car cal induction hood looks like it's been tubbed out in the back probably maybe a gold car originally because it does have gold right in there or so or orange not a hundred percent sure but uh, if you needed a start on a resto mod style 1969 camaro this would be man, a, a good start i know man i do that's a cool car 10 bolt rear end it is. It's a 10 volt. Yeah, it's got it's a 10 volt in there. It's empty. I'm Parker, by the way. I'm Sean. Nice Sean. to meet you. Where's the old man at? He's, He's here. He's around the corner. Oh, okay. I was yeah. going to say, I always come here every year. I always see him and look at all your guys' Corvettes. I just haven't seen him yet. Yeah, he's been here over 20 years. Yep, so yep. we recently purchased a business from him. Okay. So that's why we're here. Awesome, awesome. What can you guys tell us about your cars? Or So we're building Resto Mod chassis. Gotcha, okay. C1, C2, or C3 all have C7 suspension. So it's C7, that's yes. C7 C7 stuff. suspension, C7 brakes. Our chassis include uh, brake lines, fuel lines, steering rack, complete, powder coated, so it's nothing's a la carte. And how much do they cost? 28750 28750 yeah. and And uh, this is, of course, chassis concepts. I know that, I see you guys all the time, right. but this is their company here, Chassis Concepts. And what we'll do is just go over, I guess, we'll take a look at this frame over here. What, what can you tell us about this one? One. This so is for a C1? 53 to 62. Okay. So it's, it's a different shape, but this also has a C7 suspension, as all of them do. 
with C5 differential. Gotcha. C5, normally with a C5, you get the transmission that bolts to the, the differential in a normal C5, C6, C7 car. It's got the torque tube in the middle. Right, so we eliminated the torque tube, put a yoke on there, so you put a normal drive shaft in there. So that way you can you can put an LS with a trans, automatic, this automatic, or a stick shift. And the reason that, you know, when you're building an Arresto Mod Corvette that you'd want to do something like this is because the rear tire width. Well. Am I right? Kind of. I had a C, I had a C2, I had a 66, and I had to put offset trailing arms on the back and right. everything like that because the way that the, the frame is manufactured, you can only get like that big a wide tire on the back. Right. So you can, but you can only go so wide with these okay. because of the convertible top well oh, gotcha. and the gas tank. Gotcha. You can go wider if you want to lose that. Okay. And then you'd have a hard top or just be a roadster. But if you want to keep the convertible top, this is the widest you could go the widest you on go. the C1. Okay. And what's this C2 behind us? That's a customer's car that we did. Um, that has a John Jameson chassis under it, C5 suspension. Okay. LS3 480, five speed, vintage air, custom interior, flush mounted glass. There's no moldings. Uh, so. Hold on one second. I'll show the audience here. So you can see that on this car, there is no chrome molding that goes on the outside. He was saying it's just flush mounted glass. Something that I think that I want to do to my Camaro. But Camaro, uh, they make I know glass that. yep. flush mount. This yep. isn't. Okay. So we had to take the standard glass that they give you and raise it to level it out and then fill in that gap to make it a gap oh, around the, okay. the glass, front and rear. I think so it looks quite a bit of work. Yeah, I think it looks, it looks awesome. really well done. Pretty cool. Well, I appreciate your time, sir. No Thank you so nice much. Meeting. So here we have all the different instrument clusters or the or the dash panels for C2 Corvettes. And to start out, we have a, a 1963. And the reason we know that it's a 1963, of course, is it has the the silver cone on the inside here. But it also says that it's a high horsepower car, which is probably the 360 horse fuel injected motor. And we can tell by the red line. You see where it red lines there at 6,500 RPM. Now behind it here, we have uh, another dash, and this belongs to a 66 or a 67. We can tell by the, the flat glass and the flat back panels behind the glass. But you can see that this either belongs to a 435 or a four and a quarter horse car because it does have the red line at 65 all the way to seven on a 66 and 67 dash. Now, if we take a look at this 65 to 67 dash, we can see that the red line is right here about 5,500. So we know that this car dash did, did not have the big motor inside. So here are two different cars. These are 1965 Corvettes, and we'll go over the differences here in just a moment. But this is a convertible, and of course, this is a hard top. Now, in 1965, was the first year that you could get a big block in a Corvette. We can see that this does have a, a 396 down inside there. It's the only year for the 396, and it also has the four and a quarter horsepower. It's the only horsepower option for the big block in 1965. Now, when you got the big block, you also got the big block hood. Now, the hood does have functional hood scoops, and we'll take a look at this one over here. You can see the reflection of the sunlight and see how the air actually can get inside here. But what was also different for 65 is it would have gotten 396 turbojet badges on the side. And then 65 also got the same as 66 functional louvers on the side. Now, these cars also have uh, knockoff wheels, something that was a rare option in 1965. There was only 1116 cars that got the knockoff wheels. But what's also different about 65s are the seats. Um, in 64 and 63, the stripes on the seats go front and back of the car. And in 65, they're a little bit more comfortable and they go side to side on the car. But also in 65, they started getting louvers on the roof support here. But on the driver's side, they're actually functional. So if we go around to this side, We can see that they are functional on the inside here. And what's also unique for 65 is the grill. It's the only year that had black inserts on the grill down here with a silver chrome ring around the outside. These cars are for sale. So they're asking uh, $125,000 for, and of course, we do have the phone number for the car right there for this one. 
And we also have the phone number for this car. They're asking 125,000 for right there also. So pretty cool, unique stuff on a 1965 Corvette. It's extremely hot out here. We're gonna take a stop in the T building here and cool off. And they have the heavy hitter cars in here. And these are the Corvettes that are the most special ones here at the show. And we'll start with three Callaway cars. Now, Reeves Callaway III actually just passed away about a month, month and a half ago. And these three cars are here to honor him. This is a 19, well, this is a 2001 Callaway C12R. Now this is the first time that this car is actually displayed in the United States. This is the first time this car is displayed with the two other Callaway cars that they have. This car did actually race at Le Mans in 2001. You can see back there, it does have the sticker on it. Uh, but this car did not finish. It uh, had overheating issues. You can see that it does have carbon fiber in the, the pillar there and in the front mirror. Pretty cool stuff. The second car here is a complete bespoke build by Callaway. I think it looks similar to a Toyota Supra from this angle. It is a uh, 1997 Callaway C7R. So yeah, there was a C7 before the actual C7. And you can see that it does have uh, P0 wheels on it. I think those are pretty cool by Pirelli. But this car does have uh, orange mirrors. It was completely 100% built by Callaway not really a Corvette turned into a race car, more of just a bespoke build, completely built by itself. We'll take a look at the front end of this car. Just something completely unique. You can see it's got the Callaway Le Mans badge in the front, lots of carbon fiber components. Just uh, not a car that I've actually ever seen before. That is crazy, right, that he just sold it all? Now, the car next to it, this is a uh, 1994 Callaway LM serial number one car. Now, this car is pretty important. In 1960, they actually uh, won Le Mans. Corvette won its class. We'll take a look at that car here in just a second. But it finished eighth overall. This car finished ninth overall. It was the second highest placing Corvette up until 1994 course got the stickers on it you can see that it raced in the g2 gt2 class up top there it didn't finish first in its class in, in 94 it actually finished second uh, but really cool callaway cars huge huge corvette uh, presence here with callaway just passing away it's good to have these cars in the building honoring reeves callaway so this is a, a 1968 corvette l88 so it does have the big dog 427 down inside there but it doesn't have the tri-power setup it just has the single carburetor and it also has the largest carburetor offered ever by chevrolet on top of that l88 motor now what's important about this one this car is actually the 1968 sebring winner so this car won sebring in 68 however it did not race in le mans uh, this Le Mans in 68 was actually postponed um, due to, I believe, like a student protest or something like that. So instead of racing in June, they raced in the fall. And by the time the fall rolled around, this car actually got sold to a different owner and never was shipped over to France. So it did win the 68. You can see here. 1968 Sebring winner, first in class. And you can also see that this was prepped by Don Yanko. And I believe they have a picture. Yeah, you can see uh, Don Yanko takes the win. That was at a, uh, a different event in 1968, not actually Sebring. So uh, you can see here that Sebring was in, in March of 68. So really cool car, really, really well-known car, 1968 Sebring winner DX car on the side. Now, earlier we talked about knockoff wheels on 63 Corvettes. Now, there was no regular production cars that had the knockoff wheels, of course, but this one does. So 63 is the first year for the Z06 RPO code, which is more of like a race version than the regular Corvette. So for example, see the gas tank back there? This has a, a big 
20 gallon gas tank so this thing could uh, go around the track longer in 1963. However, this car is not an actual Z06. It's one of 14 cars that were produced before the Z06 package was available as like a test run for the series. And this is the most successful one of those cars out of the 14s. You can see here it's got lights all over it so it can run different races. It's got air induction in the back. But of course it does have the knockoff wheels because it is a race car. Now this car also was Don Yanko prepped and it was delivered to the CEO of Golf. Now Don Yanko and the CEO of Golf had been racing for several years up until this point and had been very, very successful. And this was just another car in that lineage. Very, very cool Corvette. You can see it does carry the number one on the side here. It's got, uh, it is fuel injected. It doesn't have the, the trays here. You can see that it has functional hood vents. Just a, a race ready rocket in 1963. Probably one of the coolest 63 Corvettes that you're gonna see in a long time. So the next two cars behind me are pretty important Corvettes and they're both 1960 Corvettes. And this one is number one. And that one down there is number three. We don't have number two. But one, two, and three all raced at Le Mans in 1960, and they were raced by a guy named Briggs Cunningham. Now, his thought was he wanted to race in the 24-hour Le Mans, and he wanted to win that with an American car, so he chose Corvettes. And these are two out of the three that he has. This is the number one car. Remember, this is the car that did not win, but we see here it does have the Le Mans sticker on the windshield. We can see the lights so you can see it racing at night on the side there. You can see the gas has been has been moved behind the seats on the inside. And you can also see that it is fuel injected here on the inside. First year 57, of course, this is a 60, so it's not exactly brand new. But of course we got the, the early edition knockoff wheels here. This car behind it is pretty much exactly the same. However, this is the winner of the 1966 in its class at Le Mans. It won eighth overall, but it did finish first in its class. And it's so basically it makes it the first Corvette that won at Le Mans, and it makes it the first Corvette that won its class at Le Mans. So really, really, really important Corvette right here. You can see it's painted in white with blue stripes for American racing colors. Basically the same car as the one behind it. However, this one has the number three on the side. And you can see the front of these cars. They had the, the lights blocked off for more aerodynamic shape. But you can tell the difference because this one has the red on the front and that one has the white. But you can see here that it was uh, first in its class, eighth overall, and it has a bunch of pictures of the car racing at Le Mans. Really cool stuff here at Carlisle in Building T. Hey Mitch, how are you? Good, how about yourself? I'm good to see good. you. So this is my buddy Mitch. He has a, a C2 67 Corvette that he brought here to the show. He also has several spaces here from selling stuff. But before we talk to him, I want to let you guys know that he does have a, a YouTube channel. It's right here. It's called Mid-Year Mitch. And uh, from the last couple things on the channel, you've been kind of putting this car together, right? Yep, that's right. I've devoted about three months into building this car from beginning to end. Okay. Uh, so the car's been off the road for 40 plus years. It was cut in half right down the middle. Oh. Uh, so I decided I want to bring this thing back with vengeance. So I ordered the baddest chassis I could, Roadster Shop Spec 7. So it uses all C7 Corvette suspension, C7 brakes, big wheels and tires. I just wanted to make it handle like a machine, but I wanted to keep it kind of rough on the outside. And, and that's one thing that uh, I, I admired most about this car is that you didn't do anything to the back side of it. You know, right. it looks kind of like a, like a barn finesque from the back and it does have the new stuff on the front. And obviously you said when you got the car, it was, I imagine probably cut like right here. So yeah, it was actually cut through here and then right behind the shifter. So the original car was cut right through here. Wow. So it and was completely cut in half. You said that you have a, a Spec 7 Roadster Shop chassis underneath yeah. this thing. That thing's pretty dope. We'll take a look at that right now. And um, 
For those that don't know what a Roadster shop chassis is, it's probably what, top of the line on the market yeah, right now? Yeah, it's one of the best ones you can buy on the market today. And what, what made you decide to go with that? Or what was the, the, the thought process behind that? Or just walk us through yeah, that. Yeah, I liked their chassis because it was, a, it was one, it was the most affordable chassis that had some of the greatest technology. I'm a mechanical engineer by trade and okay. I loved the engineering in it. I met the guys, they do beautiful work. The welds are gorgeous and it uses all GM parts. It doesn't use a Ford nine inch. I wanted to keep the independent really? rear suspension. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so I, awesome. I wanted to have IRS because that's the way they originally came. So, okay. and that was one of the baddest chassis you could get. And then you have uh, you have a 327 small block in here. Um, did this motor come with this car, or where did this motor come from? No, or? so this engine was actually the heartbeat of another project I had that was pieced together, the Misfit Split. Misfit so Split, okay. I basically threw the parts catalog at a, at a bare block, and it makes 500 horsepower at uh, 6,900 RPM. They oh, had wow. it wound up on the dyno to 8,000 RPM. So, I mean, the thing just is a screamer. What wheel and brake package, or what does this come with the Roadster Shop chassis, or how does that work? Yeah, so I opted to get the Z51 C, uh, C7 Corvette brakes. I bought these separately from GM. They're all brand new in the box GM parts. Okay, um, so they did not come with the chassis. No, you can order it through them. Okay. It was a little cheaper to buy them yourself. Gotcha. And then I used a C6 Z06 427 wheels. So they're nine and a half inches wide in the front. 12 inch wide in the back so you can fit a 345 inch uh okay. or 345 tire so there is in the back. there is room back there yeah I'm, you mind so. if we take a peek underneath here no, absolutely I'm, i've never looked underneath the back side of a roaster shop i've seen their work oh, it's finished great. many times but ugh. no that's the best part it was a shame to cover it up oh yeah guys take a look at that down there plenty of room for meaty tires on the back there you can see it says spec 7 just i mean when you look underneath that car that's what you want to see that's right now what are the, what's the i don't really get to meet a lot of younger guys that are building pro touring corvettes or resto mod corvettes what is the the plan for this car um what, what what's your end goal i know you have a number on it but yeah it, is it for sale or is it something that you plan on taking the whole way or so I put a number on there because everybody wanted to know the number. Right. So I put a number. If someone wants it more than me, they can take it. But I'd really like to finish the patina. Okay. Because, you know, Mother Nature worked so hard to get this. Yep. So I want to take this and kind of bring it to the front and finish it out and make it all look more uniform. The 66 car I had was a Mossboard green car. And it sat since 1973. It was a no-hit body. I redid the whole frame on it. The whole car looked like this. It turned into a silver over time okay. from like the silverish green washboard green turned into a silver i sold it to a guy and he painted the whole thing red so maybe that <sighs> was 10 years green ago is such a rare color too that's such <laughs> a shame i know i know dude i know but but that's kind of what i i had like i was just giddy when i saw this car because I, I i thought you know if you finish the whole thing out like this it'd probably be one of the most badass corvettes that out was there. the goal what also i think is cool mitch is that you have a gretsch pedal for your you play drums that's a drum pedal down there, isn't it? Yeah, drum pedal. That's no, a, I, I love old music, love rock and roll, and what goes better than classic cars and rock and roll? Yeah, so I wanted to a, throw a 60s pedal in there. Yep, that's a, a pretty unique piece down there for the, the gas pedal. But uh, what's uh, what's the timeline on something like this for you to finish? Is it just something you kind of work on? Is it something you're going full steam ahead on right now? Or? Uh, so I worked on it full steam to get it ready for Carlisle. Okay. There was, I just wanted to get ready to show show people you know what I can do and kind of what the channel is, help it be a spokesperson. Yep. Um, for now, it's going to be a back burner, and probably in the spring, I'll start working on start the working interior on and the paint and stuff. I have a couple other project cars that have been... You stand red on the inside? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the car originally was ermine white with a red interior, and even this is what the color would have been originally. It turned more into an ivory over time, uh, but I have a company that can hopefully match that ivory to make it make it look more weathered. Okay. How do you, uh, how do you like working with fiberglass? It's a little itchy at times, but I don't mind it. I don't mind it. Uh, I have plenty of experience with fiberglass. It's yeah. not it's it's not fun, but you can do a lot of stuff. It, it's it's very forgiving in some ways. It and is. It's very, uh, I like working with metal. I do all the birdcage work, the okay. steel structure underneath these cars. Uh, so I'd like to do the metal work, but it's nice to jump into fiberglass too. It's it's it's. I think it's actually pretty user friendly once you know what you're doing and what, you have the right products. Once you, once you know how to mix everything and get it to do what you want it to do, it is pretty easy. For, yeah. In my opinion. It is. Well, Mitch, it's extremely hot out here. We're yes. going to go find some shade. You guys can catch him again at uh, YouTube at Midyear Mitch. You only live over in Pittsburgh. You're not that far from me. We'll come out and check yeah. out your stuff. Absolutely. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure. Thank yep. you very much. This is awesome. Give him a like and subscribe to the channel, Midyear Mitch.
Thanks. So we can't do a Corvette video without talking about the brand new E-Ray Corvette. So I'm here at the Chevrolet booth and behind me is we have a Corvette E-Ray. Now for those that are not familiar with this car, this car is operated by gas and it is operated by electricity and all four wheels spin. In other words, most of the cars were real wheel drive Corvettes. This one is an all wheel drive system. It does have a motor in the front and in the back. This is the quickest Corvette ever made by GM. It goes zero to 60 in 2.5 seconds, as well as it goes down the quarter mile in 10.5 seconds, which I think is pretty impressive. But I just want to give you an overview of the outside of this car. You see the interior here. I think that, uh, you know, that that blue interior looks pretty sick. You can see the, the old E-Ray badge on the side here. But I want to give you a step back and just take a look at the car as, as a total. Sorry. Now these, these wheels on here are actually manufactured for this car specifically by Michelin. Uh, we'll see how wide they are here in just a moment. See it's got the spoiler on the back. Little stingray. But yeah, over here is a cutaway car. And of course, you can come and sit in any of these vehicles, but like I said, this is the quickest Corvette ever. And you can see that all the batteries are right in the middle here where the torque tube would have been in previous generations. You can see the way that the battery pack is set up here. Now this car has two motors in it. It has the original engine back here. And uh, of course the frame is made from uh, high strength aluminum, but it does have a, a front drive unit up here. We can see that right there, that, that unit right there drives the front two motors. So this car does handle in the snow pretty well. Now, that unit actually cuts off when you reach 150 miles an hour. This car can go almost 200. I think it's like 195 or 190 or something like that. But that motor will actually cut off at 150. And so when you exceed 150 miles an hour, you're only running on the rear engine. As a Corvette, you know, original Corvette fan, you know, it kind of seems like we're moving in this direction. This is GM's attempt at basically a hybrid car for the Corvette. I think they did a great job. I think the C8 Corvette looks beautiful. I think the back end could use a little bit more of a redesign, but look at the size tire on that thing. I mean, you really, really can't go wrong with a car that makes that much horsepower and just goes that fast. I mean, it's overall, it's a very, very beautiful, beautiful car. Let us know what you guys think about the new E-Ray down in the comments below. One of the coolest cars here at the show, in my opinion, is this big block 427 1966 Corvette. And of course, 66s have a soft spot in my heart. But the first thing that's different on a 66 is, of course, the egg-shaped grille down here. Now, this car has never been restored. And something else that's different on a 66 Corvette is, of course, the Stingray and Corvette logo on the hood. That is one year only. Now, we can see here that it does have the big block 427 L72 four and a quarter horse motor, and it doesn't look like it's ever been removed. And we can see here that the owner is asking 99,500, and the phone number is here. This car was uh, originally a Laguna Blue with blue interior. It does have its uh, Protecto plate and original title from 1970. You can see that on a 66, the chrome mold, the molding down here for the fender is a, is a little bit different than on any other year, as well as the headliner in a 66 is uh, not a foam. It's, it's more of a, a cardboard that's underneath there one year only. Now, also, we can tell that it is an original big block car by the red line on the, the dash inside there. And 66s do not have any louvers on the roof support here at all. Now this car, I'm not sure if it did have original knockoff wheels on it. They only made 1194 cars in 66 with knockoff wheels. But what is specific to 1966 Corvettes is the this piece down here around the exhaust is actually chrome from the factory instead of stainless steel, only on a 66 car. We can also see that the, the fuel cap is different. It's different for every year. And of course, the reverse lights are right here.
but we'll give you an overview of this car. Just a really, really cool barn fine Corvette. Remember, you could get a teak wood steering wheel. This one just has the original wood steering wheel. But uh, overall, really, really, really cool 1966 425. Corvette. So this is a, a 1962 Corvette. Looks like kind of like a barn find or it says driver or survivor here. And uh, the outside of this car, I've looked at it. It does look pretty cool. It has a, a racing stripe. I don't know if you can come back to the front here and see the, the racing stripe that goes down the, the front of this car and down the back of it. We'll see the, the owner's asking $62,500 for this car, and you can see right here his phone number. Look at that. Of course, I'm not sure if the interior is original to the car. It looks like a pretty much completely original car. In other words, the fiberglass underneath doesn't look like it's been painted on about four different times. But what I want to do is take a look underneath of this car and see actually what you're getting for $62,000. And you can see that the frame, you know, it doesn't look like it was restored. It looks like kind of the top of the car. Um, presents itself just like it does on the bottom here but on these Corvettes on the 62 this cross member right here uh, usually rusts out right here but this one does look like it was replaced so what do you guys think in the comments let us know below behind me we have several different cars that are in several different conditions and the first one is of course a 65 Corvette and they have a, a resto mod body on here, but you could turn this car into pretty much whatever you would want. We can see pretty much the fiberglass condition on, on this car is in fairly decent shape. And you can see the body lines through the fiberglass. See here. You can see how they were kind of put together as different pieces. And we'll show you the, the way that the top section comes. This is a NOS top surround. And this fiberglass piece alone, just this top piece, is, is $5,000. You can see NOS standing for new old stock. And that is the top piece on these Corvettes. And the section back here is called the birdcage. Now, it does have metal in it. It is made mostly out of fiberglass. You can see that the frame is metal here, of course. But up and through the channels here, you can see there's a little bit of rust issues right in through there where the metal actually is in the fiberglass and that's kind of what you want to look for when you're restoring something like this. Now it did rain last night so it does have a little bit of water in here but uh, this car overall doesn't doesn't look hateful at all. I mean it doesn't look like there's much to replace on this car. Of course you have your um, VIN information and your count or your tags there. Looks like the glass in this car in the back is, is pretty nice. But just uh, looks like a, an overall good start for a, a Corvette project. This next one over here is in a little bit rougher condition. It is a convertible and he's asking $14,500 for it. You can see that, see how this fiberglass is cracked here. But what I wanted to take a look at is the 67 car over here. This is a, a 67 Corvette, and this is the last year for the C2 generation, and this is just a more refined version. And what I mean by that is it doesn't have any of the logos or the emblems that go down the, the side of this car. They've removed all of those away, and it's the only year that you didn't actually get wheel covers. See, all, fact, all Corvettes in 67 came with actual wheels. The back end is a little bit different. We can see that it does have a, a different cap here. But 67 is the only year where they got the reverse light back here. You can see that there's no reverse light right here like there is on, on a 66. And what's cool about a 67 is, of course, they do have a, a parking brake. You can see down in there. I'll see if I can open it. It has a parking brake in between the seats. That's new for 67. Oh, and as, uh, as new for 67 is right here on the cove, there's no handle. So on a 64, a 63, 4, 5, and 6, there's a handle right here for you to grab onto. And 67, there, there is no handle. 
you can see it does have the big block and there are three carburetors so there's one two three carburetors on here now that is the only year in 1967 as a c2 corvette that you could get the tri-power set up on a c2 now it is not the first corvette with the tri-power the first car that had the tri-power on it would be the original corvette in 1953 with the blue flame motor and that's why it says here that he is on the atkins diet it's atkins diet approved it says only three carbs and you can see that they do have the car for sale for hundred and fifteen thousand dollars what we'll do is back away here and as we're doing that we'll take a look at the side scoops right here which are a one year only for 1967 and it does have the, the the big block stinger hood on it which is also a 67 only option as well so something that's pretty cool here at carlisle we'll go back to the laguna blue car over here and i just want to show you the difference between the the frames so if you see how rusty this frame is right in through here and take a look at how rusty this one is that's been sandblasted it looks like in through here and that's why this one costs twenty eight thousand and that's why this one costs 14000 also because this one is a coupe and this one is a convertible. 